Hi, welcome to VNN, our discussion series, episode number 20 with Ambassador Praveen Verma. And uh, today I think we'll just have a look, uh, quick look at um, Pri Indian Prime Minister Modi's visit to Europe and uh, some other sundry things. <laughs> welcome, <laughs> welcome to VNN, Praveen. Uh, thank you, Bala. Good night to be with you again. Yeah. And, um, uh, the way you started the discussion, it seems that we will be on sundry matters today for a long time. <laughs> nothing much happening, happening around, isn't it? Yeah, and nothing much happening, I think, except of course <laughs> the loudspeaker uh, problem in, in India. No. Yeah. yeah, loudspeaker is good. I don't know. The Azan and the Hanuman Chalisa. I don't know what's happening. Why? They suddenly come up into the front so that uh, Raj, of course, the Shivasena is. Is it between the Thakare and Thakare? Between two Thakares and uh, both trying to be more Hindu than Dal. And that is the problem, yeah. And now, of course, um, I think they have uh, the Raj Thakare is finding fault with uh, Sharad Pawar. So that, that could be turned interesting now. No, that is true. I would say the problem with uh, the whole situation over there oh, is. Adi, yeah, that's the problem, yeah. That, that um, Pawar is controlling. The whole thing, yes. That is the problem, yeah. And That's Pawar is an old foggy and he 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 knows how to manipulate people. Oh yes, I know he knows it. And he has yeah. two Thakres against each other. Congress is in a bit of a problem because today Chidambaram is defending uh, somebody from the TMC and there were congressmen uh, abusing him. No. I don't know. Chidambaram has been a, 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 a defending so many people in the National Coast Court of Justice also. Yes, I know. Who, who, um, Chidamram, I don't know. He'll go, by the, he'll, he'll go by the money. Is. He'll go by the money. Yes. Exactly. Although he has lots of money, he's got inherited money. He has he made millions and millions. Make. But he's yeah. anyway that type, so can't, we can't say anything. That's his yeah. choice. Isn't it? Anyway, so uh, Modi has gone on a, was it a three day visit, but he has packed a lot of, uh, a lot of, oh, like, yeah. of activities <laughs> in his three days. Uh, started with Germany, went to Denmark, now he's in Paris. Then now he to, and then he had the Nordic, uh, in the Indo-Nordic so Nordic conference. So he met all the heads of team, heads of governments. Of five in, countries. Denmark, uh, Finland, Sweden, yeah. But, uh, Iceland. Yeah. One interesting so, thing I noticed, you know, was out of those five Nordic countries, four have women presidents, heads of state. Yeah, but they, 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 they are. They are sensible, rich countries yeah. having pockets, and uh, maybe women are sort of controlling the economy and everything. Economy. So, yeah, that's what I think it looks like. Because all, all the five out of the five four are uh, women, and uh, Modi went. Uh, Modi was there a good established, like good relationship with them. And, and here's a bachelor coming in. <laughs> they, they, were, they were quite, they were, they were quite, I think, enamored because of the way they were shaking hands and that the body yeah. chemistry. You know, I think uh, right. he has uh, sort of. Uh, <laughs> The queens and the princesses and the prime ministers, everybody. The there. queen of Denmark also. And of course, uh, with the... Modi is looking for investments and uh, sort of uh, economic cooperation with the Nordic countries because they are quiet, sitting over there, rich. Yeah. They've got lots of money. And if we are able to tap their resources, it will be good for us. This is the second Indo-Nordic conference, and uh, hopefully something comes out. Yeah. And of course, the, the whole thing, the, 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 the international visits are basically goodwill visits, uh, talking, meeting each other, talking to people, trying to get to know each other. And of course, there, the Germany, will Germany has so many agreements, nine agreements, I understand, it's signed in Germany. One, one good thing was, I mean, uh, uh, since the Nordic countries are very interested in this maritime sector and ocean management, I think they are signing a lot of agreements on that factor. On those yeah. things. And another thing is the Arctic region, because India is now very interested in the Arctic also. Once the Arctic opens up, India has already said that they have an Arctic policy, and uh, yeah. India, India is already strong in the Antarctic because we have that uh, Dakshin Gangotri research yeah. station, and yeah. uh, we are quite strong there. Once the Arctic Ar yeah. Arctic is water and there's lots of oil under it. So I don't know. Uh, there, there are various countries also trying to have territorial uh, sort of uh, interest in it. But then 
I don't know. It is still international waters, I think. International waters, but I think if we are very close with the Nordic countries, I think uh, we'll have, we can have a... Something will happen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, even I understand Canada has lots of interest. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yes, true. And quite but, a number uh, oil exploration being done near the Arctic Circle, yes. But also, that would be a, a very interesting thing. Yeah. So in Berlin, of course, it was economic recovery, climate change, sustainable development, but innovation and uh, digital economy. And of course, that uh, he's, he, was, he kept on talking about that. that <laughs> one is busy talking on various things. But one, one, one thread which goes through it is on the communiques which were issued, India has refrained from blaming Russia. Uh, for, uh, for the Ukraine, uh, he just called for peace. He just called for peace. He said the war should stop, and we should have diplomatic dialogue. Uh, so, despite of so much of pressure, he's been able to sitting in Europe. He's been able to manage to maintain and maintain his own position. What he wanted. Yeah, but another thing is, I don't think any of the heads of state uh, mentioned it. Also, you know? maybe yeah, private, yeah. The, in private conversation, but not publicly. You see, in joint, once you in a joint communique, both sides have to agree. Agree on what it is, okay. What you have to say. So if you don't agree, then you don't put it in. Simple as that. That's the bottom line. This private conversation, they must have had spoken yeah. something, but uh... you see what happens is that once you so if you should joint communique, then sometimes you talk to media people independently, separately. So that's where the occasion is, where he would have said that uh, we want uh, a diplomatic solution and. Uh, Peace should prevail over there. What do you think? So diplomatically, when this visit was successful, would you think would you say that? International visits, if nothing happens uh, adverse, it's a success. You have gone out on a public relation that's a side and an exercise, depending upon your economic interests, the political interests, and the interests of that area. Hmm. So in that way, I think. Uh, we didn't get any negative signals from any of these countries. Uh, details are still to come out and we'll be able to analyze it perhaps in the next meeting. But I haven't seen anything uh, uh, adverse and anything which any media has also picked up, uh, which could say that uh, there has been some sort of uh, adverse follow-up. As far as we are concerned, so many agreements have been signed in every country that we have been able to su successfully interact with all the Nordic countries together in one go. And Germany, of course. In, in France, we have, we, we take the dubious credit or the real credit of being the first VIP visit or the first prime minister visiting Macron after his re-election. Germany, Germany too. After um, uh, the chancellor Olaf was elected, he, okay. he's, uh, Modi is the first foreign visitor. Yeah. And he so, mentioned that, of course, he spoke about the Indo-Pacific as a um, Germany, I think that, that is a good, uh, good, good yeah. visit there. Uh, these are things that Modi picks up somehow. <laughs> I don't know. He, I think his star is still in the ascendant. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, so um, I don't know what happened in France. I think he's going, he's meeting him today with Macron. Yes, I've not seen any yeah. report yet. So. Yes, I'm out there today. Yeah. France, we have a long time strategic relationship, so. We don't have any problems with it. We'll no. be there to just to strengthen it and for further it, maybe some some deals on some military uh, components or something. But then uh, we, we, we we don't have any worries as far as France is concerned. It's going to be forward. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, on, uh, Ontario elections have been announced for June 2nd. So it should be very After interesting. Four days uh, way ahead, it seems. Yeah, the country, yeah, Ford and Ford looks way ahead, yes, way ahead. Yeah, that point, although it's lesser than the previous time, but still it's quite ahead. But then what has happened is that uh, um, uh, NDP has taken away some of the liberal share. Yeah, that's what has happened. I think it'll, the position will still remain the same with Ford oh, and, and NDP as a second because party. And the liberals will are... continue to remain the same. Yeah, that's and what it looks that... like. As as the premier candidate, uh, he's way ahead because Del Duca has no position. Del Duca comes third after Orwell. Yeah, after Orwell, yes. So, so there, Del Duca has a lot of work to do. And uh, I, I doubt he'll be able to catch up because uh, I have a feeling that the, the market was outside people. Uh, it's Ford is quite popular. He still remains Ford very popular. Ford is popular other than Toronto Star. 
I think he is quite yeah, popular. Random first release. But once he goes into the countryside, into the into northern Ontario, southwestern Ontario, it's all Ford, 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 all the way there. You see, as what happens is that out of Toronto, G, out of GTA, so the GTA, yeah, GTA, Ford has his control and he doesn't have to worry about it. Yeah. So Ford basically has to control, concentrate in GTA, and that even the 905 area. If the liberals have a greater hold on the immigrant population and these areas are filled up with immigrant population. So that is area when he has his work laid out. He is the entire out, uh, GTA out of, uh, 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 entire Ontario out of GTA is more or less secure. He has yeah. to work So he made, a, he, made, he made a gap recently, uh, last week when he said, uh, I wish he the uh, happy he to the Sikh community. <laughs> 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 I wrote a tweet saying, uh, I wish happy Eid to the Sikh community. Uh, okay. I don't know if somebody, maybe for somebody in his office, but I don't think he's sitting in Somebody put the wrong shape over there. <laughs> yeah. He won't be sitting there and typing those things, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. staff who do, does that. Anyway, it's very interesting, this election. So, uh, of course, he said uh, apparently the last four years have shown uh, that we will work together and we are unstoppable. He has been popular. He has been popular. There is no doubt about that. And he came as a from the background of poor Patrick Brown. I still yeah. <laughs> sort of sim have sympathies with him. Now he has greater game to play with as a as a. As a as a as a, yeah, I feel the Pierre Polivier is uh, way ahead of uh, all the others. Yes, yeah, all of all others. Yes, Polivier. But Polivier, I don't know. His body language is a bit too smug. It's not because I think he has this. He has this. He's I think very confident that he'll win uh, the conservative race because I think in the western western Canada, uh -huh. in Alberta, and all, he's he's very popular there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. And he speaks well also when he, whenever he has a little more I right. Think, yeah. Um, let's see. That is we have. We don't have to bother about that at the moment. Yeah. Uh, we we have to look at Ontario and Ontario. I think is. Uh, what did they call slammed, uh, slammed, uh, what dunk it in? Simple, simple. Yeah. Four years, four years there. Patrick Brown is only apparently six percent of uh, conservative support, so that's he's way down there, way down there. He, he used the tactics of uh, our friend Jagmeet Singh of getting the uh, votes. Immigrant for... vote, really. Yeah. Just thinking of immigrant vote, but that that won't help in a conservative race. I don't think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First of all, conservative. The, the, all the immigrants, um, as it is, flock towards the liberal side or the NDP most, side. Uh, most of them, yeah. I don't know. Uh, that's <laughs> their individual choice of votes, isn't it? Yeah. No, the point is an immigrant is again a um, liberal or NDP, left of center immigrant yeah. coming in, trying to make their ends meet, trying to grow. So there's a natural uh, connection between the stay two. In the, so, stay in the middle, yeah. That could be one of the reasons. Yeah. What more is happening? The U.S. Um, another issue of this uh, abortion rights. So that's that's flaring up after fifty yeah. years. Of well, the, can, Canadians are happy that whoever wants to get an abortion done, they'll come from the Canada. And they come to Canada. Or money. So they said, "Yeah, we are, we will enshrine it in our legislation that uh, we will never be discussing anti anti abortion law again." So I think there'll be a lot of abortion tourism to Canada. No? <laughs> yeah, abortion tourism. Abortion laws <laughs> pass, isn't it? No, I don't know why the US takes up these issues, uh, but it's apparently the Supreme Court is... Uh, Supreme Court, you see, it, it is. I mean, there, there's a judiciary and there's an executive and judiciary feels that the earlier decision was wrong. I mean, that is a part of uh, what the judiciary... Yes. I mean, Trudeau can say whatever he wants, but if judiciary takes it up or here there's a case and the decision is taken, then not, they can have, I think it only has something called the notwithstanding clause to override the judiciary. Uh, Otherwise, on these major social and policy issues, uh, if there's a clash between judiciary and the executive, um, we'll have to see what happens. Biden, Biden cannot veto it. I mean, I don't know. He, like he can override. I don't know. Well, I'll just find out. If Biden has the power to veto the Supreme Court also order. 
I, I'm, I, I'm not clear about the constitution. Or, or whether the, um, the, all the representatives can pass another law overriding this, we don't know. Yeah, but I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm, what I, I'll have to concede that uh, American constitution of... Uh, yeah, because I think in India, the parliament can override the Supreme Court. Eh? Yes, in India there is, uh, but I think uh, it has to be a uh, big majority. I am again, we will have to study that and discuss it in the next meeting. Yeah, I think we should. I think Rajiv Gandhi did it during the Shah Bano case of the 1980s, when the Supreme Court said about family maintenance and uh, he, the, the Muslim community was very upset. And then I think Rahul, Rajiv Gandhi, he used the parliament to veto the Supreme Court order. Something there. Should we should look into this again? Yeah, we we will visit this. Um, China, India, it's all quiet now, suddenly, because the Russian, Russian uh, the Ukraine... The, so Ukraine has taken over everything as far as China, India is concerned. And uh, now India is more concerned about uh, uh, Russia going into the Chinese fold. And that will make our position more difficult once, uh, if Russia buckles under the sanctions and uh, the Chinese come to his support and basically, because Russians, the amount of sanction which is being thrown on them, and um, they have definitely moved towards China in their, in their, uh, in their system to suffer, seeking support from the Chinese, and Chinese are given a shoulder. And we have to see how far it goes. And if the two joke, we have a problem on our border, yes. What will happen then if, uh... If Russia say maybe we'll lose the war against Ukraine, that they will go back without gaining anything, then of course, then the uh, Russia is isolated. Completely. That that won't happen. I think uh, this telemate will continue, and at some stage there'll be a win-win situation. You get the eastern Ukraine totally sealed off, and that somebody would claim victory or something uh, on the Russian side, and Ukrainians will claim victory that we couldn't let. The Russians uh, come and conquer us, and uh, as it is, Maripol has again flared up, and uh, the, the army guys are sort of fighting uh, desperately. Uh, so once once they take over Maripol, which, yeah, which the eastern fall, brain can fall, so, then Russians can say that okay, the eastern sector has been totally blocked, and we've got a direct uh, link from uh, Russia to the to Crimea. Yeah. So losing, the perception might be different, but both sides will say we won, we won, and that should have happened long time ago if the Western powers wanted, but they've been sort of instigating Ukraine. And that has been the bane of the whole situation that uh, nobody is listening. Putin has been obstinate, okay, fine. He, he, he's overstepped his limit too, that's fine. But then uh, there's nothing which has come in to stop him and nothing has come in to stop the other side and come to a compromise or come to a diplomatic solution. Everybody is talking and even Modi is saying diplomatic solution, diplomatic solution. For, but diplomatic solution, somebody has to sit across on across the table and talk. If you don't talk, there's no diplomatic solution. Well, India has not uh, said anything against Russia so far. Nothing, not a word. Nothing, nothing. and again, uh, Sometimes there is discussion about India's role in the peacekeeping process between those nations, where um, we have not shown the initiative, but there, there is a, a prospect where India can play, play a major role in uh, mediating between the two. But I don't think there's any any reason to step in unless and until there's indication by, uh, say, okay. by or the Western powers to see that, okay, fine. And if, as long as you keep on arming and sort of giving your arms and ammunition and support, once you keep, that means that you're not interested in diplomatic things. And if you're not interested, if one side is not interested, then there's no point in talking to the other side. The Russians might be more unable, as you said. They might lose the war. Everybody is thinking they might lose the war. So they, 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 it is the Russians who have to find a force saving solution, not the Ukrainians. That is the, that is, in my view, the current scenario. 
the ball is in the Russian court because they have to decide whether, whether, whether to stop the war. Otherwise, it can go on for some time. Yes, the nuclear country, so and with, with they be time and again sort of threatening ki chhodenge, yeah. chhodenge. <laughs> So one 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 has to be careful about that. The same advantage with uh, Pakistan. I mean, people are supporting yes. every third day. I will use this. We'll use this, and that's. Thing. Anyway, I think uh, we have spoke, spoken about sundry things. Uh, nothing very big else happening in this world. Uh, except it's nice and sunny outside today. So golden. Yeah, like that. This, at least in the city. It looks like summer. Summer is already here. But I, I, I was reading some news reports about our friend uh, Rahul Gandhi partying in Nepal. What, what did yeah, happen? Yeah, yeah, I saw the video. He was in uh, in Kathmandu. He says he's attending a wedding, but uh, he was in a nightclub. Uh, and a nightclub? Uh, nightclub. Yes, I, they are saying it's the Chinese ambassador. There was a Chinese woman there. It's, they say it's the Chinese ambassador to Nepal. And uh, he was whispering in her ear and... Uh, of course, uh, the Congress party says, so what? It's his personal time and he can go anywhere, which is, which is true. Which can, he can do whatever he wants. Whatever he wants, yes, but uh, uh, he, he, he has to be careful. But then uh, his nemesis, Smriti uh, Irani, the minister, she's, uh, she's in Vainad. His, his constituency <laughs> and meeting, uh, meeting people and uh, district officials. <laughs> she defeated him in Nemesis. Now right. she's <laughs> she's, like, uh, she's, she's chasing him around. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's very funny. Very funny. Anyway, uh, thank you, Praveen. So I think uh, uh, we'll uh, we'll stop it here and we'll continue next week with uh, okay. good, good, good. Uh, some other subjects. Yeah, and then yeah. thank you. Okay. Thank you for watching. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Nice talking to you once again. Bye.